Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. Oh, man, really tough loss, obviously, um, for all of us, you know, but I do want to just kind of emphasize and touch on that we did have a really good season. I know most of us don't want to hear that, and I know y'all probably got some Easter Sunday stuff to get to, so I'm not going to take up too much of y'all's time, but I did want to come here and just chat it up because, man, I mean, you want to talk about a loss that I feel like Tennessee, I mean, we shouldn't have lost that game, you know, just honestly speaking, and for those of y'all who don't know what's going on, Tennessee did lose to Purdue. Um, what was the score? Like 72 to 67 or something like that. We'll pull all that stuff up here just in a minute. But um, man, I, I am um I'm just frustrated. You know what I mean? Just just frustrated with the way that we played as a whole. Um, you know, I think the DK played well. I think that Ganey played well in Spurs. I think Meshack played well. Tobe, I mean, he stepped up big time. JP. I mean, you know, a whole lot of these younger guys that we know will be back next season, they came in and they balled out. And that's really what you would want to see. Okay, that's what you would expect to see. But at the same time, you hope that some of your veterans can get it done for you too. And I think that ZZ struggled today, right? Like we talked about it uh, in the video that I put out earlier today that, man, I feel like he's going to be a lot better than he was last time that we played up against Purdue. And he just, you know, he just did not look like the, uh, you know, ZZ that we've seen over the past couple of weeks, especially after that last game. Now, was he gassed? I think that it's a pretty good possibility that he could have been. And that, I mean, it just killed us, you know, like we could not stay in front of uh, that guard. And I, I don't, I can't think of his name right now, but we could not stay in front of him. The defense looked a lot better whenever Meshack was guarding him. I thought that we would have kind of stuck to that. But, um, you know, I think that he kind of just was burnt out, right? He didn't look great shooting. He, excuse me, he didn't look great shooting shooting either and that can happen uh once your legs kind of get tired and you know once you get uh you know just pretty much exhausted it looked like he was exhausted did he catch some of the flu that santi had i don't know these are just the questions that's kind of going through my mind as i'm watching this game um and then you know we could talk about jonas adu who didn't show up at all and i don't want to be too hard on any of these players uh because you know listen guys it's tough right like i've never had to go to a um you know basketball tournament like this one on such a big stage where you have to travel around you're playing games back to back and uh, you know you're giving so much effort so he really just didn't give us much and honestly speaking you know i've talked about it for about like a month now on this channel that he just kind of tends to for whatever reason it's like the moment seems to be too big for him sometimes he's got to find a way to um I guess just settle in, right? And obviously it can't happen this season because our season is over. But for next year, there's something that I think that he needs to work on because we're going to need him. And, uh, you know, it is definitely encouraging to see our other bigs that are younger players stepping up the way that they did. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, as much as I hate to say this, as much as we probably all hate to say this, I think that a lot of this stuff came down to, um, you know, the way that Edie was getting all the calls. And we are about to pull this up here in just a second. But, I mean, whenever you get every single call, I think he shot like 20-something free throws. I mean, it was something just astronomical. But, um, you know, whenever something like that happens, it's difficult, right? I mean, like he's getting every single foul call. And, I, I mean, I just – I don't know what else to say outside of something needs to be done about just giving players – so much leeway and there was a couple of times where he's elbowing people in uh, you know in the face uh and we talked about that earlier right it's because he's so tall his elbows is going to be hitting people but you got to call the fouls on him because a foul is a foul is a foul and the referees failed to do that today and I, you know i think that it showed in the final score uh you know it was a time that they called a jump ball when he's going at triple j and there's a picture of him literally pushing him so I don't think there's any team, you know, especially not in this year's tournament, but maybe in any tournament in the history of uh, the NCAA that would have beat a team like Purdue today, uh, you know, whenever they're getting all of the daggum calls. Now, I am going to go on ahead and pull this up for y'all because we do have to talk about, you know, some of the stats, right? This makes it a lot easier for us just to take a look at who played well and who didn't, okay? So we lost 72 to 66. Like I said, Jonas Adu right there at the top, zero points. I mean, he just really didn't do anything. Every time we passed him the basketball, he was fumbling it, or if he's shooting, he's just, you know, not putting enough force into the shot, right? Like, there's not enough strength. I mean, you could just tell that, honestly speaking, he just he just choked. I mean, that's it just is what it is. And DK, 37 points, 14 of 31, so that's somewhere around – you know, 40 something percent, you know, maybe close to like 45 plus. So I think that he did good from the field. He's six to 12 from three point land. Okay. So 50% from three, that's 
I think that that's great, right? He's three or four from the uh, free throw line. And I think that he played pretty solid, uh, you know, just in every other facet of the game. Okay, so we could talk about his uh, his rebounds. He had three and he had one assist. He had a steal. I think that he did a pretty good job just trying to get in there and, uh, you know, try to get Edie. I, I guess just kind of like off of his spot or just try to get a steal, things like that. He did pretty good with that and everyone kind of helped with that effort. But you also look at the turnovers and I think that he was a little bit careless with the basketball earlier in the game. But, you know, I feel like he kind of got it all together. We already know DK, he balled out and then on down to Ziegler, who actually had nine points. OK, it doesn't sound like he had that many. And he had one three pointer. I mean, he missed seven of them. So he shot eight and he only made one. He's three or twelve from the field, which, um, you know, I, I think what that's like 25 percent or it's somewhere in that ballpark. So just didn't play very good. I mean, he just didn't have a great game overall. He just didn't. That's just what it is. Um, you know, he had eight assists. So he did a pretty good job of getting the ball around to everybody. But at the same time, I mean, he just overall, you know, I think that even he would tell you that this was not his best performance by any means. And May Shaq only had two points. But I like the way that he played. He only shot the ball once, and it looks like that was a three. Now, sometimes these, you know, once you uh, take a look at ESPN early, straight after a uh, uh, game, sometimes these numbers are not correct. But I think that that's about right. It seems like he did shoot a couple more times. But anyway, I think he played great on defense, a whole lot of effort. He kind of got into foul trouble, but that's to be expected. Like, you've got to look like it's win or go home. Don't leave no fouls out there uh for us to you know use next week uh, next next season right so um you know i think that may shack i think that he played pretty solid and then josiah jordan james he shot with confidence especially early on it just wasn't really enough i think he played well on defense as well and tobe was probably the star of the daggum show it's not going to show up too much in the box score but the way that he was able to defend Edie was very very impressive so i love to see that for sure jp estrella Stepped up huge. I mean, literally, a do well, he went out early in the second half, and he didn't come back. You know what I'm saying? So that tells you a lot because Coach Barnes trusted JP, and I love the fact that DK was able to, uh, you know, get him that alley-oop, so he gets two points. I think that was big for his confidence moving forward. Um, and then Ganey, he had a couple of really big shots, just knocked down, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you want to see. You want to see players that are not scared of the moment. That's big. That's critical. And, you know, I think they stepped up well. And Santi, I want to say he had a pretty big turnover at some point in the game. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of all like a blur to me right now. But I think that he had a pretty big turnover. He didn't score anything for us, but we know he's kind of coming off of being sick. So, you know, I, I like what he did whenever he was able to get out there on the court. I don't know how many minutes he got because that hasn't shown up yet, but he probably got somewhere around, you know, maybe eight minutes or something like that. So I think that that was good just to get the other guys a spell. And then if you take a look at what Purdue did, 40 points from Zach Eady, who shot 22 free throws. It's unheard of for him. to, And he literally did not have a foul called on him, right? Until what, like five, six minutes into the second half. That's unbelievable. I mean, that's something has got to be done about that. And I think that they'll, you know, probably end up winning it all. Now we'll see if they end up going to the championship. Maybe it'll be called a little bit more evenly and then they'll lose because you know, I don't mean to, you know, dog on Edie or on their team as a whole, but I don't see a whole lot of great playmakers, okay? Edie is big. He's not very skilled. We saw whenever we kept him away from the basket, he's not really hitting shots. So, and then, uh, you know, we also saw the lawyer, okay? he's He was the other one from the previous time that we played up against Purdue. He scored, I think, 27. I think he ended up being their leading scorer. Edie had 23. I want to say that he had 27. He drops 14 in this game. And, um, you know, he wasn't, I mean, I don't remember him being too much of a factor at all. It was that little guard, Smith, that seemed like he was a problem for us. And he just kind of broke down our whole defense. Um, so, you know, it just is what it is, man. They shot 45% from the field, only 20% from three. So we did a pretty good job of closing out there. 63% um, from the free throw line. We almost shot 40% and 42% from three. So I talked about it, man, in the, uh, you know, I talked about it in the pregame. I said, man, look, if we can shoot at about 40%, then we are going to win this game. And we didn't. So that's not the only reason that we lost, like we just kind of touched on. It had a whole lot to do with several, several factors. But I would say, number one, it really has to do with, um, with the way that the game was called. I mean, just the, the referees did not give us the benefit of the doubt. And it's very difficult to play defense basketball period if all the calls is going to one person so 
I don't know, man. If y'all know some people who can, I don't, you know, who have some type of pull with the referees and things like that, then by all means, and you know, I think it's time if y'all can set up like a, a, you know, something for us to sign. I'll be happy to sign off on that because it sucks. This team with so many different, you know, so many veterans, and then adding DK to the mix, I feel like it was a very special year. I do feel like we are better than Purdue, even though they beat us twice. Yeah, you know, I just kind of feel like we got cheated twice, and it just is what it is. You can call me a homer or whatever you want to. And D Taylor says, "Sup, bull uh, and folks, what's going on, D? Man, I, I don't know how y'all feeling, but let me know down in the chat." And Slim says, uh, "It's been a great season, go be going." So let me also tell y'all this: I'm in a different studio, so I can't or I haven't figured out how to like show y'all's chats and things like that, but. I can see them and I will read them off as they come in. It looks like they might be coming in a little bit slow as well. So, you know, that that's neither here nor there. Really, I just wanted to make sure that y'all understood why I can't get them up. But yeah, I mean, I just, I can't understand. I can't understand, um, you know, how they can come into a game and and call so many fouls one-sided. And, and, and they've been doing it, right? Like it wasn't just versus us. They've been doing it throughout the entire tournament. That's why I had touched on that. I said, man, look, how the whistle is blown is going to affect the outcome of this game in a major way. And, and usually it does. But whenever you got a guy that's already about a foot taller than everybody else, and it's hard to stop him just playing with fair rules. I mean, you throw in, hey, if you touch him, if you breathe on him, it's a foul. If he elbows you in the face, it's not a foul, right? If he pushes you down to the ground, it's not a foul. Whenever it all goes so one-sided, it's almost impossible. Like, how do you stop somebody that's seven foot five, 300 pounds? I, I think we had a really good game plan for it, right? We kept him far away from that basket, and we saw that whenever we did that, I mean, he would score every now and then, but I would say that his, uh, you know, his field goal percentage probably dropped from whatever he shot, with, you know, he's probably shooting at like 60% today. I think that it dropped down to somewhere around, I would say like 30%, you know, the further that you get him away from the basket, he's just, he's not a very technically sound player. And that's kind of what I was trying to get at is that I just don't think, I think that he's good because he's big. That's the, that's the biggest reason. Okay. It's not that he's overly skilled. And again, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to dog on him, but it just is what it is. I don't see a whole lot of players on their team that are overly skilled either. Now I will say again, that guard, man, he did a really good, he, he does a good job of kind of, uh, lulling the person that's guarding him to sleep, and he's he's fast. He's able to attack that basket, and he sets things up well. So I'll, I'll give those two players credit. Um, but, you know, pretty much outside of that, uh, you know, I'm not going to give them too much. So he was 13 of 21. I don't know what that percentage is off the top of my head, but, I mean, that's, that's pretty strong, right? I mean, that's over 50%. Uh, and when I'm talking about he, I'm talking about Zach Eady from the field. Let me get to some more of these chats. I see that Nug says uh, it was a tough break. Uh, yeah, he got his calls, but that wasn't the reason we lost. It was a good run. DK is special. Yeah, you know what? I agree with that to an extent. I mean, definitely DK is special, but I also feel like those calls, I mean, I don't know. This is going to be one that I probably won't watch back for like a week or two or something like that. Um, but, you know, I'm going to watch it back and I'm going to see, okay, you know, were these calls really affecting us as much as we felt like they were? And I, I mean, I think that it did. I think that that turned the game. Whenever it's two teams, even though I think that we're better than Purdue, it was kind of an evenly matched game, right? Like, I don't think that we were way better than them, but I do think that we're good enough to win the game. So if you throw something in there like that, again, where you've got somebody that's that big and that dominant, and you're giving them all the calls, you're getting your key playmakers in foul trouble. Um, and then, you know, there was a time when Tobe is going for a loose ball after we're playing good defense versus Edie, and that's called a foul. That was that was Tobe's fifth foul, you know what I'm saying, on a, on a hustle play. It's stuff like that. And I mean, even though maybe that was a foul, but at the same time, you know that a player is uh, already has four fouls and he's approaching his fifth. Why do you call it there? And a lot of the fouls leading up to that point, which is very ticky tack. And Tobe was by far our best defender on Edie um, today. But, you know, I think that JP was right there with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that he did a, a really good job, but I mean, he's he's young, right? So he's not going to be able to sustain that. If we could have had two players that could come in and continue to guard Edie, kind of, you know, like take turns and, you know, you go out there, you, you know, you go 110% and then you can go over there and take, you know, like a five to 10 minute rest, something like that. And then you come right back. That would have been extremely beneficial for us, but, you know, we ended up losing Tobey and, uh, you know, it was, that was pretty much it after that, right? Just because we didn't do a good job shooting either. That's something else. Like we just didn't as a team, it kind of looked like, especially once we got down towards the end of the game in the second half, it was like, okay, well, DK, bail us out. Um, and it was, wasn't a whole lot of movement. 
on offense. Guys were just kind of standing around. Hey, look, we're going to stand around. We're going to set these screens and stuff for DK and then let him go to work. But he was tired. I mean, everyone was gassed. At this point in the tournament, everybody's going to be gassed. But we needed other players to step up. So, you know what, Nugs? I, I guess I can't agree with you, right? Uh, to some extent, as far as, hey, that's really not the that's, – that's not the full – reason of why we lost there was other factors and a lot of it was because um you know we just didn't have guys hitting shots now let's get on to detailer uh what do you make of this regular season rick stuff so i don't believe in that i don't think that any of us losing today had anything to do with rick barnes i just don't you know i think that he called uh you know from a coaching perspective a really good game i think that he did a, a phenomenal job of putting players in position to win especially uh you know leaving jonas adu on the bench, right? Because we were, we were all just kind of calling for that. Like, man, look, Adu, he probably needs to stay over there because every time he comes in, it's like, uh, you know, Rick Barnes will say, okay, I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to let you kind of get yourself back together. Then I'm going to put you back out there. But he never got himself together. So I think that that was a really good look. Um, you know, I like our defensive game plan too. I think that we did a really good job whenever it was executed well, but that was the biggest thing is it just wasn't the best of, uh, you know, executions. Now let's see. Slim says uh, Tennessee won the series against Georgia. Uh, a little good news anyway. Yeah. So that is big, right? So Tennessee's baseball team did uh, win their, uh, their series versus Georgia. And that's always a big deal. And here's my nephew, Brandon talking about Georgia uh, is one of eight teams still playing, still playing in what, sir? Um, <laughs> what are you talking about? They're, they're still playing basketball somewhere. Oh, okay. But they're not playing inside of the NCAA tournament, son. So, yeah, Georgia sucks at, at basketball. And like Slim just said, man, y'all suck at daggum baseball, too. Y'all y'all about to be sucking at football, too. I can't wait for football season. That's kind of what I wanted to say. I wanted to start chatting, let's play football, because I would love to see them. You know, I would love to see them out, uh, you know, on the, on the football field. And they barely beat us in basketball, which is their sport. They're not even going to come close to beating us on the football field. But... It is what it is, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it's a it's a tough it's a tough break about halfway through Easter Sunday. Um, I know for for some of us, but hey, man, it just it just is what it is. I, you know, I would say this at the end of the day, I am still proud of this team as a whole. I just think that really ultimately, man, we kind of just we just kind of ran out of gas. You know, like we just kind of ran out of gas. Now we'll see what happens in that uh, in that transfer portal. Can we go out and get another good score? Because, again, man, we've got some really good pieces that's going to be coming back for us next season. I think that we could make a really deep run. The other thing for us to be happy about is I think that if we would have went to the Final Four, especially if, if we go to the championship um, and if we win it, I think that Rick Barnes would have gone on ahead and hung it up. I think that he would have been done coaching. Now, that's just pure speculation on my part. But so, you know, we get Rick Barnes for another year. And hopefully this year we can just – you know, we can take it that one more step further. Um, you know, we made it one step further this year and we've got to get to that final four. We just, we, we've got to find a way to find more people who can score on a consistent basis. And we got to find people who are clutch. I think that that's the biggest thing is you can't nut up in the most critical moments. And, you know, again, man, Adu, I think that he nutted up. I don't think that Zakai nutted up by any means. I just think that he was exhausted. You know, I hope that he doesn't have the flu. I hope that he's not sick, but... That's just what I take from it. And Green Wave says, uh, I'm just glad we didn't lose uh, to a lower seed. Let's find another uh, gym in the portal, and we'll be back next year. Hey, that's that's very well put. Yeah, very well put. You know, it's not like we were necessarily favored by the experts to win this game, but it's still, man, I, it's hard for me to accept that because I feel like we should have won. You know, I, I honestly do. I feel like this is a game that we should have won. Now, let's get into Dirty Higgins uh, says this one hurts. This was the first season where my 14 year old son watched every game with me uh, and I wanted to be a champion or and uh, yeah, and I wanted it to be a championship year. It was uh, it was a fun year and he is going to be a Vol fan for life. Well, you know what? I love hearing that Dirty Higgins because that's really what it's all about, right? It's really all about watching these games, cheering for your Vols with your family members. And, you know, you just build a, such a special bond. And hopefully that's something that he's going to be able to pass on you know, forever and ever and ever. So that does make me happy. Like, I, I, I love hearing stuff like that. Uh, and then G. White says, great effort, but the refs weren't having it. Yeah. Um, G, I, I think we're kind of on the same page with that. Let me see. G also says, um, uh, Estrella outplayed Adu versus Edie. He took Adu's minutes in the second half. Yeah, he most definitely did. And I, I know that Adu feels bad. So I don't want to beat him up about any of this stuff. You know, I just, you know, I, I don't want to be too hard on him because I know that he feels really, really bad. But Hopefully he goes into the offseason and, uh, you know, maybe he will remember how this felt 
and he's going to work harder and he's going to say, all right, you know what? It's time for me to go back to work. And in these critical moments, this is what I'm getting ready for. This is what I struggle with versus these bigger players. Um, and I'm going to find a way to get better at that. And it's not going to happen again next season. That's that's what you have to hope for, right? Like you have to hope that we learn something and we take something away from a loss like this. Uh, now, let's see. D. Taylor says, if we could have gotten uh, by Purdue, we would have made the natty. That, there's no question about that, D. I, I agree. Uh, Duke or NC State didn't have anything for us. Agreed. You know, I, I, I just think that if we would have, right, literally won this game, yeah, I mean, I think that we would have won the whole thing. Now, UConn is a really good team, and they've got a uh, Zach E type of a player. Now, the difference between those two, and I can't think of his name right now, but he's a much more skilled player. Like, he's actually skilled. He can run the floor. He can shoot. He's got some pretty good moves. He's not going to be one that, um, you know, you can necessarily – I mean, obviously, everyone's got weaknesses and holes in their games, but he's not necessarily one that you can just say, okay, we're just going to try to push you, you know, about 8 to 10 feet away from the basket – and force you to shoot some crazy, you know, hook shots and stuff like that. If it goes in, it goes in, but we're going to live with those odds. I, he, he's a player who can do a lot more, so he would have been a problem, but I'm not too – I don't look at UConn as some juggernaut team. Now, they're going to look like it probably moving forward, again, unless they go up against Purdue because Edie, if he continues to get those calls, I don't know who can beat him. I mean, how do you beat a team that's getting all those calls? Uh, now, let's see. Oreo Puppy Dog says a do was way down. Yeah, um, he, he, had a, he had a tough day. And then G. White says, uh, was like the NC game. It became the DK show. Uh, and we are at our best when we spread the uh, – it just moved up uh, when we spread the points around. I agree. And then Brace says, who do you think uh, will win the national championship now that Tennessee is gone? Yeah, so I'm going to probably go with UConn because I think that they are the best overall team that's left. But at the same time, I don't feel like – Oh, but you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Alabama is in there too. And, I mean, I'm never going to be cheering for Alabama, but as quiet as this is kept – I think Alabama could give them a run. If they go out there and if they get hot shooting, I think that they could win. You know what I mean? Like I, I could, I could see that happening. But um, you know, we'll we'll see how we'll we'll see how it all plays out. But yeah, I I think that UConn from top to bottom is the best team. Whenever you talk about being able to do it all, play good defense, things like that, that's Alabama's problem is that they don't play great defense. They don't start playing defense until like the end of the game. So if they're close to you at uh, you know, towards the end of the game, I'll say with about five minutes left, it's gonna be tough uh for you to beat them you have to kind of take the hope out of them take the fight out of them early on to be able to win those games and i've got the nc state duke game on right now duke is up 21 to 14 versus nc state that would have helped my bracket out so if tennessee would have won me and p would have been fighting for first place because we both picked tennessee the uh leader right now uh has picked nc state inside of my bracket and then it's like three other people that's up in the top that picked uconn but I had a feeling that UConn was going to lose. I was like, man, me and Pierre are about to jump in. But, yeah, so at, at this point, Bray, I think that UConn probably is the team to beat. Boosted 931 says Tennessee got robbed by refs. I agree. You know, we was just talking about that. That's, that's what I think. You know, I think that there's always several layers and several factors to losing the game. But for me, those referees just play too big of a role in this one. Um and let me see. Actually, I want to pull. I, let me see if I can pull this back up for y'all, because I do want to go back to the foul situation and see if it will show how many fouls each team had. Let's see. Does it show that? OK, I don't see the fouls on here. All right. So it's not showing the fouls, but you can look and see how many free throws we shot versus them. So they shot 33. We only shot 11. And I mean, that tells you a lot, but I don't know how many fouls, like, I don't know what the difference was right there. If anyone does know, please leave that down in the chat because I would love to know that. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was very obvious that the whistle was not getting blown the same way by any means. It was, you know what, we was just talking about fouls that, well, it was just like a, uh, you know, like a phantom call, but um, it was triple J, right? Whenever he goes down, he uh, steals that ball from, from Edie and they call a foul on that. That was all ball. I'm the, I, you know, we watched it back a couple of times. I'm like, well, where's the foul at? He jumps up. He hits the ball. It's all ball out of his hand. I don't see him making any contact with Edie by any means. So really quick whistle whenever it comes to Edie. But they're very, very slow to call it. And actually, Edie pushes. I want to say that was Triple J, too. He pushed him down on the baseline. And it took him, like, five seconds to blow their whistle on that. Like, what are you waiting? Dude, if it's a foul, it's a foul. You've got to call it. So I agree. And uh, G. White says... This was NCAA payback at Tennessee. That's a great point. You know what? That's one That's one factor that I had not thought about at all in this whole thing. 
That's exactly what it was. That's exactly, and that makes perfect sense. I think that that is what it was. But I'm gonna finish reading what you said, uh, what you were saying right here, uh, G. And he says Purdue is like their home team. Yeah, that that makes a whole. Oh, you know what? That actually makes a whole lot of sense because what the NCAA is in Indiana, right? Okay, very interesting point, G. Um, Boosted nine three one says we counted six over the backs on ED, no calls. Yeah, so you know what? I also was just reading on social media and stuff as I'm kind of watching the game, people are counting Edie's time down in the paint. And they're like, oh man, like he was down there for 10 seconds one time and no calls. That's that's insane. Now I wasn't counting that. That's not something that I usually count. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if that's true, I mean, something has got to be done, but we all know with the NCAA, you know, running this show right now, they ain't going to do nothing to those referees. So that, that, those are those are a couple of good points. Ethan says, uh, at Braylon, probably Purdue, since they don't get any foul calls on them, yeah. Uh, yeah, agreed. Uh, Eric Funkman says Purdue owns Rocky Top. <laughs> Sir, um, I can I can tell you this right now. Um, Purdue's football team. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I have a cousin who actually plays for uh for Purdue. So I, you know, I'm not gonna talk about. It. But I'm gonna say this: Tennessee is a national championship caliber team, and I, I would love to. Uh, I would love to have the opportunity to play up against y'all in football and. You know, we'll see how y'all do, man, once the game is called fairly, sir. We'll see. We'll see if y'all can win once the game is called fairly. Let's see what else we got. Um, Ethan says, I knew we would lose after we let them come back from 11. That was that was the scary part because, yeah, we had a, a great thing going at that point, right? And then it just seemed like we just got gassed. And I think that Rick Barnes maybe should have tried to call a timeout at that point, right? Like, kind of slow some things down. We need to get some breaks and rotate some people in because at that point, once you're up by that much, just play good defense, right? Just be able to stay in front of your guy. If you can do that, then yeah. I mean, obviously it would have been a completely different second half, but yeah, that was a little bit concerning to me, but I didn't think the wheels out of it literally until, until we stopped fouling. Well, no, it, let me see. Once they went up by whatever, five or six points and it was like 20 something seconds left. I was like, oh man, you know, it's going to take a miracle for us to come back, but I didn't really give up hope yet. Uh, but it is what it is, y'all. Now, let's see. John Watts says, Edie definitely fouled, but our guys could not buy a basket either. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. I mean, it was a, it was a really bad combination of both of them two things, right? He's getting all the calls. He's going to the free throw line, and he missed several of them. But, um, you know, I just I think that we kind of started forcing it. Like, it was a combination of us being tired and trying to force up shots, and that usually doesn't go well for you. And then it also turned into, like we said earlier, it also turned into people kind of standing around and waiting on DK to to be our savior. So I hope that we learn from that moving forward. People have got to be able to score. Everyone's got to be a shooter in those types of situations. Uh, boosted 931. Uh, it's disgusting to watch. Tennessee could have won the game. The rest made Purdue win. Uh, it's sick to go this far and get cheated, though. Yeah, and that's, that's the hardest part, man, is you think about all the hard work that everyone put into this whole thing and then, you lose like that. But I don't think that we, I mean, you know, like we didn't get blown out. So the loss could have been worse. And uh, like someone said earlier, it's not like we lost to a lower seeded team. So I think that, uh, you know, for the, for the most part, and I said this earlier, if you're just now joining us, I am proud of this team. And I'm, I think that Rick Barnes did a good job with this team. So I'm not, I'm not looking at, I'm, you know, I'm not calling him regular season Rick, like some people are, are saying about him. I think he's fine. We just got to try to replicate what we did this year and just play with a little bit more confidence down that home stretch. Uh, now let's see right here. Eric Funkman says, you did. We just <laughs> whooped your butt in your backyard. Oh, man. Eric Funkman, you are a funny, funny man. And I don't even, I don't remember when y'all just whooped us. Because um, I don't, what, like, when's the last time Tennessee played Purdue? That was, that was years ago. Uh, years, years, years ago. If, if you're talking about football, anyway. But, um, you know, where did y'all finish at in the Big Ten this season? Weren't y'all, like, dead last? So, I don't think I'll be coming on here talking about other sports, sir. Y'all are a uh, basketball-only school, so let's just let's just leave it at that. Uh, now, let's take a look right here. Isaac Nunley says, years ago, uh, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't remember the last time that, uh, that Tennessee lost to Purdue. Um, I mean, that was, that was years ago. <laughs> if, if you're talking about football, years ago. Uh, now, let's see right here. G. White, uh, Rick was just uh, too late calling timeouts, 11-point lead. You call it when it's down uh, to six-point uh, six score by them. 
Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think that, well, okay, so I will have to kind of say that. He, he did kind of mismanage his, his timeouts, you know, I, I, would, I will say that. But, I mean, hey, nobody's going to be perfect. I, I don't think that that was the reason that we lost. You could look at the execution. You, you could look at the way that the game was called, I think, more so than what the actual game plan was. That's, that's just for me, though. Yeah, I don't think that Rick Barnes lost us this game. Um, and <laughs> I, Isaac Nunley says 4-8 uh, and eight last year, yeah. I, uh, I think you're talking about um, talking about Purdue's football team. And uh, boss, I'm not going to read that name. Uh, a dude was just pitiful. Yeah. A dude. Yeah. Very, very, very tough game for him. Isaac Nunley says Purdue is trash. Boosted 931 says Purdue. Um, and I'm not going to read uh, any more of the stupid stuff. Yeah. Um, D, D Taylor's talking about the Music City Bowl, uh, Music City Bowl in 2021. Yes. That, that was, that was, that was years ago. Okay. It's now 2024 to, uh, to who was that talking uh, to Eric Funkman? Yeah, that, that was, that was a while ago, sir. Tennessee's a much better team now. H Gerard says, uh, nice playing with you falls. Uh, we're on the Arizona. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not going to read no more of y'all stuff. Hey, you know what? Isn't there a Purdue live stream for y'all to get on? Yeah, probably is. But see, this is why we don't, you know, this is why we don't like Purdue because y'all suck at everything. Right. I mean, y'all are trash at, at everything. You come out and you win a game after. OK, I mean, who played well for you outside of Edie? What lawyer? Who else played well? Your team really is trash. Your, your team has been the uh, you know, y'all have benefited from the referees giving you all the calls. And I didn't want to take it that far with it. But if you want to just call a spade a spade, we could call a spade a spade. Y'all aren't a good team. Your scheme is uh, there's nothing that you're doing that uh is overwhelming by any means outside of the fact that you've got to play the seven foot five he's a foot taller than everyone else and he gets all the calls how are you going to stop that it's very tough to do but we'll see again y'all play up against a team and i don't care how big their players are because Edie is you know he's not going to be able to it's not like you've got to be his size to stop him all you got to do is just get him a little bit further away from the basket he's not very skilled so once y'all go up against the team and the game is called evenly y'all are going to lose and you might lose by a pretty large margin, okay? Uh, so y'all need to start getting ready for that. Y'all need to be, you know, y'all need to be looking more towards hoping and praying that y'all can win this next game because you can't look forward to football season. You can't look forward to baseball season. You don't have a whole lot to look forward to. So y'all just need to enjoy these moments. And I would recommend to do it in the company of your own fan base. And, you know, not, not trying to be a uh, uh, troll on someone else's because come football season, just keep in mind, okay, those tables are about to turn pretty hard on you, okay? All right, so let me get to a few more chats here. Uh, let's see, where we at? Where we at? Uh, Gregory Holmes says, Vols for life, you already know. Um, what else we got? We got G. White. Uh, it's a production year. Uh, we get further than any other team in 14 years. Success and proud of our guys. Absolutely, absolutely. Good Vibes says, we scored at the end, uh, and they did not give us a clear touchdown um yeah okay so you're taking it back to that music city ball i y'all I, I don't think it's even necessary for us to bring that up i mean this is a completely different team we're talking about the music city ball this team is you know we're fighting for national titles in in football right okay in in the real money maker in the one that's actually you know it's really difficult okay it's extremely difficult to get there right that's what our team is really good in and you know what look our basketball team we're good at, at basketball too we, we played well this season we had a good season we just you know, it's hard to overcome a, uh, you know, big giant and all of the referees and all the NCAA. So we'll be back next year, though. I ain't even worrying about it. We'll be back. Green Wave says 99.9% uh, .9 of humans on Earth do not know what or where Purdue is. Yeah, that's a really good question. What city is Purdue in? If someone could tell me, I will send you $25. You got five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. No one knows where it is. Okay. No one outside of Purdue fans, if you if you if you would have to look it up to know where it is. Uh, now let's get to a couple more. D Taylor says Louisville stole Brom from y'all. Uh, imagine losing the coach to Louisville. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. Let's see who this is right here. Okay, so it's wrong, baby. Says I think next year we could possibly be a little bit better. So I'm happy that we did as well as we did. Uh, the refs were rough for sure, though, but. Us missing open jumpers was the problem. And yes, go big orange. I, I do agree with that. You know, really, 
at the end of the day, you can't blame it all on the refs. You got to be able to hit shots. And I think that if we would have done that, we still would have won this, even with the refs doing what they did. So, you know what? We're going to end it on that note. I'm going to let y'all go ahead and get, you know, and get back to y'all's Easter Sundays. And I'm going to get back to mine. I'm going to finish watching this Duke game. Right now, Duke is up 25 to 18 if you're not currently watching it. Um, and it's two minutes and 44 seconds left in the first half. I think that Duke is going is going to go on and I think they'll have a lot more success versus Purdue than our volunteers did. I don't care who wins though. You know, Tennessee's not in it, so I'm not just going to be cheering against Purdue because I don't really like Duke either. It's all about our volunteers, but we'll be back next season and it's going to be on to baseball and football season, softball, all of that, you know. So as always, thank y'all for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all on the next one.